And here we are with problem number three in the Python in five problems video series. And in this one, we're going to take a look at repeatedly calculating the average of several numbers. And obviously, anytime we do a calculation repeatedly, Python can be helpful. And I'm also doing this example because there's uh, an EQAO question related to this in the EQAO sample test. So we'll take a look at uh, how we'll code it here, and then we'll kind of take a look at how it might show up on the EQAO test. So let's start with uh, just averaging, say, five numbers. And say we had a situation in which we needed to keep finding the average of five different numbers. So how could we do that, and how could we make Python uh, do some work for us? Well, how do we average numbers? We add them all up and then divide that result by the number of, uh, of values that we've added together. So in terms of a program, how could, we, uh, how could we execute this type of thing so that we could keep using the program over and over again? Well, one thing we could do is kind of start by gradually increasing the total of our values. So start with, say, a total of nothing. Okay, and then we ask the user to input these values. So the user inputs the first value and the total now becomes zero plus whatever that value was. Okay, and then we repeat the process and we say input the second number and we just take our current total and add the next number to it. Okay, and then we do it again. So the user inputs the next number, so we take our current total and add that um, value that was just input by the user again. And we do this until all five values have been input and then we can uh, just divide the result by five and boom, there's your average. So what are we getting at here? Well, we're gonna use a loop, okay? And we're going to use that loop to get the user of our program to input the five numbers. And each time a new number is input, we're going to increase the total that we have by that value. So let's take a look at some pseudo code here. First step would be to, to talk about this total and to set its initial value at zero. So our total at the beginning of the program is just going to be zero. And then we'll start a loop. And we've talked about how to do this. We are going to do um, five, uh, a, a loop of uh, five cycles, if you will, because we're going to input five numbers. So we'll say repeat it five times. And each time we're going to get a number from our user, and then we're going to update the total. So the total, remember, started at zero. The user is going to be asked to input a number, and then we're going to reevaluate um, re our total. It's going to be what we currently have for total plus the new number, all right? And then we'll repeat this process. So now we'll ask the user for a number again, and we'll add that number to the current total, and that'll be our new total. And we keep doing this until five numbers have been input, at which point we end the loop. We have our total, so we can divide it by the number of of values, which is five, and print that average result. So let's head on over to Python. Again, we'll use our uh, online compiler here and uh, see how we could type this in. So uh, a lot of the concepts here, all the concepts here we've seen before, we're just going to introduce the idea of uh, using a loop to allow for several inputs from the user. So we'll say, start by um, setting uh, that initial value for total. So we can say comment here, Oops, there we go. So I'll say set initial value for total. Okay, and we'll just call the total one. We actually use the word total this time. We'll say total is starting at zero. And the next thing we need to do if we look at our pseudocode is a loop. And the purpose of that loop is to read uh, numbers and update that total. So read numbers and update total. Okay, so we're gonna use a for loop. Now we want uh, to repeat five times, so we'll say for. Now here I'm gonna introduce an idea called a dummy variable. I'm gonna just call it x, and you can call it really anything you want. I'm gonna say for x in range five. Now we know what this idea of range five is. That means we're gonna use uh, five consecutive integers starting at zero, so zero, one, two, three, four. But we're gonna use them for x. Now, x is not gonna play a role really in any of our calculations. I just need a variable here to say, uh, make x zero, do this, then make x one, do this. It's just a way for me to tell Python, do this you know, five times. You can use any variable here. We just need a variable to, uh, to use uh, for the loop to refer to, okay? So I'm gonna use x. But you'll see that x does not actually show up in my calculation. So every time we, um, calculate, uh, every time we run this, this loop, we want to 
get a number from the user and then update the total. So the number from the user, we'll just call it number. It is, well, we're gonna ask the user to input a number. So there's our input function we've seen before. And we'll say, you'll say, please enter a number. Okay, and we'll do the colon with a space again. But remember that when that number gets input, it's gonna be interpreted as a string. We wanna convert it to a value that can be used in this calculation here. So we'll, uh, we'll make it a floating point number. So we just put all this in brackets. Of course, if you're only dealing with integers, you can use int instead of float, that's fine. And once we have that value, we're going to say, take that old total, which started at zero and add to it the number that the user just input. So that'll update our total. And we're gonna keep doing that for our five, five, five cycles. And then we will uh, just go and divide the, the result by five. So notice I, uh, I tabbed, or I had to hit backspace so that it's not indented for the next line here, where I'm going to calculate the average. All right, so to do that, pretty easy to do. We'll just say the average, we'll define that variable, is whatever our total was after that loop, and we're going to divide it by five. That'll do the calculation, but of course we still need to print it. So we'll just say here, print the average. And we can use our print function, and we'll just say maybe the average is, and we'll do a comma, we'll get our average value, but we'll, we'll round it to two decimal places. So round that average result to two decimal places. Now let's run this and cross our fingers and see if it works. Here we go. We'll run. Please enter a number, okay. Let's do uh, one. I hit enter, please enter another number. Let's say eight. Oh, this is, seems to be working okay. Fifth number, now it should calculate the average when I hit enter, and it did, all right? And we can test it out. We can uh, run it again and you know do something that where the average is um, pretty obvious. Let's try something like, uh, let's do all fives and see what happens. Oops. Okay, sometimes this happens. I'm not sure what it is, what exactly is going on here. Usually when that happens, something weird, I just run the program again and see uh, what happens. There we go. And the average is five as it should be. So that's um, that's kind of a, a nice quick way that we can set up our little calculator for ourselves to, uh, to keep um, doing averages. Now, of course, why why leave it at the case where we have to average just five numbers. Perhaps it would be more useful if we could take an input from the user asking, well, how many numbers is it that you want to average? And then uh, go from there. And of course, that doesn't take, uh, take much. We just need to add an extra step here where we read the number of values from the user. And then we'll still set our total equal to zero. Um, of course, this time we're not going to repeat the loop five times. We're going to repeat it whatever values is times. So if the user says, I want to average eight values, we're going to repeat it eight times. Okay, so we're actually going to use a variable here. And uh, we'll read the number from the user, still update the total and the loop, but this time we'll not divide the result by five. We'll divide it by the number of values that was specified by the user. So let's, uh, let's try this and see if we can get ourselves a little average calculator based on however many values the user wants to use. So can we... Uh, can we leave some of this here? Absolutely, let's leave a bunch of this stuff here. Um, I'm going to go and put in an extra step here. I'll make a comment. We'll say read number of values to be averaged. And we'll just get the user to input that. So we'll say the values, the number of values is, uh, and we're gonna wanna convert this to an integer, okay? So I'm gonna start by writing int, okay? Now, why not a floating point? Because you're, you're not gonna average 7.3 values. You're gonna average an integer number of values. You could put float, it would work, but when I put integer here, it kind of forces um, an integer to be used for the number of values. So here we go, uh, input from the user, and I want the prompt to say, uh, let's say, how many values would you like to average? So how many values would you like to average? A little question mark. Okay, a space. And let's now here, maybe I can make this, that's a little bit nicer to look at. And now we're going to still set our initial value for zero. 
and we're going to read the numbers um, and, and update the total as we go. So this time there's not going to be um, five cycles of this loop because that was for when we were averaging five values. What is the number of values being averaged? Whatever was input up here, which we're calling values, the variable values. So I'm just going to say that. It's kind of cool, right? You can put a variable in the range function like that. And the number uh, will still be input the same. We'll still update the total. But in the end, we're not going to divide by 5. We're going to divide by the, um, the number of values, which is the variable values. Okay, and we'll keep our last line here the same. So let's see what happens with this. I'll clear that out. We'll hit run. How many values would you like to average? Well, let's just say this time we'll only do three. So enter a number. Okay, two, four, and eight. And it did the average after three. So if we run it again this time, let's say we're going to average uh, seven values. And and see what we get uh, there. Oh, did that weird thing again. I'm not sure what that's all about. So I'm just going to run it again and see what happens. Average seven values. So let's go 2.5, 3.4, 5.8, 3.0, 2.5. Was that five there? So 8.6 and 4.2. See what happens. Yeah, perfect. Did the average for us. So kind of a neat way that you can uh, modify that program for for taking care of five numbers to averaging however many numbers you want. The last thing I'll finish with in this video is a look at what something like this might look like on EQIO. So this is from the practice test and you can see that it says a code is written to determine the average of five values that the user inputs. So like we did in our first example here. So three blocks of code have not been placed in the code. Uh, drag and drop the blocks to correctly complete the code. So obviously what you would want to do is make sure things go in the right spot. And based on what we've seen, the first thing is of course we'd set the result, which we call total. They're calling it result equal to zero. Uh, each time that loop runs, we want to uh, get the user to input the number and then update that total or result and the loop and divide that result by five to get the displayed or printed result. So that's what it would look like on uh, EQIO perhaps. So there you go. That's uh, problem number three and we'll see you in the video for problem number four. Take care.